Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video, thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Monteverda Monza Jolly Green Flex Fountain Pen. sponsored by Kenro Industries, home of the new Esterbrook brand, starting with their newest release, the Esti. They are also the official U.S. distributor of Italian brands such as Montegrappa and Aurora. Check out the new Esterbrook Esti, Montegrappa, and Aurora pens at your favorite retailers. Speaking of favorite retailer, this channel is also sponsored by Goldspot Pens, home of Fountain Pens of the World. Go to goldspot.com to sign up for their newsletter and get a coupon on your first purchase. The Monteverde brand was born in the year 1999 from the Yaffa Corporation. They are distributors for other brands of fountain pens, including their own Conklin brand since 1978. The Monteverde mandate was to make luxury pens at affordable prices. The brand has provided the world with gems such as the Ascenza, the Prima, the Invincia, the Giant Sequoia, as well as several others. This year, 2018, the Monteverde brand released the Monza. You know what this pen makes me think of? It makes me think of the Street Fighter franchise. I know. You're all thinking, what in the hell is he talking about? But check it out. Street Fighter was an awesome game in the 90s. Later, a crappy movie came out based on the awesome game, and nothing made sense. For example, the blonde American soldier character in the game, Guile, was played by Jean-Claude Van Damme, a dude with a thick French-Canadian accent and an uncanny ability to throw down severely impractical and more than likely unhealthy full splits during tactical combat situations while flexing his biceps in overtly convenient situations where his sleeves always seem to go missing. Then, E. Honda, the Japanese sumo wrestler game character, was played by a Hawaiian dude, whom spoke perfect English, and was seemingly way too comfortable being tied up and whipped. All while Raul Julia, a Puerto Rican actor, played Bison, the Russian main bad guy of the movie. It was horrible. After that crap movie, based on an awesome game, was made, someone came up with the brilliant idea to make a game based on the crap movie. And that game was crap. So basically, here's the progression. There was a great game. Then a crap movie came out based on the great game. Then a crap game came out that was based on the crap movie that was based on the great game. The moral of the story is, you can't eat crap and poop a cheeseburger, but you can eat a cheeseburger and poop crap. What's all this got to do with the Monza? Well, I'll tell you. The Sailor Pen Company several years ago released an awesome pen called the Pro Color. After that, a crap pen made in China based on the awesome Pro Color came out. That was called the Jinhao 992. After that, Monteverde came out with a crap pen that is the crap pen that came out that copied the awesome pen that originally came out, only rebranded. This pen is the Monza. Now, having said that, there is a significant difference in this pattern of chain reaction, human centipede, crap, eat crap, poop crap, eat more crap nonsense, however and the difference is in the special edition Jolly Green Monza. This iteration includes the number five Omniflex nib and significantly changes the conversation from eating crap to not eating crap, or does it? Stay tuned to find out. That's all I have for the background information moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. The nib is a number five sized steel nib with the same Omniflex design found in the recently released Conklin Duraflex pens, as well as the newest Conklin pens featuring the Omniflex nibs. As with the early iterations of the number six Omniflex nibs, this number five Omniflex nib is not branded, but it does have the word flex engraved vertically on the nib. The feed is a number five fitted transparent version of the cheapy plastic feeds found on many modern pens of today. The nib and feed are part of an unscrewable nib unit housed in a transparent housing. This screws into the transparent grip section, which is tapered and has a slight flare up at the end. There is an O-ring placed at the start of the grip threads. The grip threads are unified with the grip and as with the rest of the pen, injection molded with the seams, indicating the injection molding process easily visible. These screw into the plastic inner threads of the body. The outer threads are what screw into the cap and once again, the seams resulting from the injection molding process easily visible. The rest of the body is a cigar shape that displays these inner bracket looking patterns and tapers to the rounded end that is closed off with a small plug. The cap is the same as the rest of the pen with its transparent color and injection molding. The finial is a plain full metal jacket shaped rounded top with no branding or logos. The clip assembly is a single tension fixed clip trapped between the finial and cap body. The interior of the cap has a cup that seals the nib at the grip and prevents drying of the nib. 
The center band is a familiar metal center band and branded Monteverdi on the front and Monza on the rear. The pen was packaged in plastic shrink wrap. Once opened, you have a cardboard sleeve that is also your instructions and information. Inside the box is your foam bedding where your pen is embedded, as well as two ink cartridges and the included ink converter. Although there's no metal in the grip threads or the threads in the body, it is not recommended to eye drop this pen. That's all I have for the neutral information. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. I'm pretty impressed with this pen. Actually, not so much in the pen itself, but more so in the way the pen writes. This pen required zero tinkering. I didn't have to prime the feet over and over. I didn't have to modify anything. All I did was simply fill the pen, wipe it off, and boom, it wrote. There were no ink starvation issues, no railroading, no skips, none whatsoever. As I said earlier, the feed is a transparent feed. It also has a double ink channel. The double ink channel is usually an issue regarding ink supply for a flex nib. However, in the case of the Monza's number no. five OmniFlex nib, this was not an issue. The nib surface area is small enough that the ink provided by the double ink channel proved to be sufficient in bridging the ink from both channels across the nib tines as they separate from flexing. Going back to its transparency. As it is transparent, you can actually look at it to see if the ink is filled across the nib tines or not. So in the event that the pen stops writing, you can just diagnose why. If the ink is not there, that's why. Fortunately, that need never really became necessary since this pen never really had any issues. Regarding how it writes, it is smoother and softer than any of the other steel flex nib options I own. It requires much less pressure than a fountain pen revolution Himalaya or a Noodler's Nib Creeper. It also feels much less harsh in terms of edginess and borderline cutting into the paper as you write. Is the line variation on par with a full flex wet noodle? No way. But in a conversation on how it stacks up against the larger Omniflex, a Noodler's Nib Creeper or an FPR Himalaya, it for sure holds its own with qualities that make the writing experience optimal due to ease of writing, both in physical pressure required as well as a total lack of need of tinkering. Oh yeah, there's this. It doesn't smell like zombie cat piss. Typically with modern steel flex nibs, we always experience issues of railroading, ink starvation, hard starts, burping of ink, not enough flex, yada, yada, yada. This goes for the Noodler's Nib Creeper, the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya, although with much less frequency and tinkering, and the number six size OmniFlex nib found on the Duraflex and Conklin pens equipped with the OmniFlex nib. With the OmniFlex nib, specifically the number six nib, I've experienced tuning and hard starting issues. A lot of ink starvation issues where the ink is never able to keep up with the line variation. This is largely due to the feed. The standard feeds used in today's pens are the chibi plastic feeds with double ink channels. Being that there are two ink channels, the channels are very thin and narrow. This slows the ink supply to the nib, as well as the amount of ink that is supplied to the nib. What I found was replacing the feeds in the Duraflex with that of a standard Bach single channel ink feed, I damn near eliminate any ink starvation or railroading issues. This is for a couple of reasons. One, the ink channel is a single channel that runs through the center of the nib, providing ink directly to the capillary action caused by the tine separation. As the tines flex and come apart, capillary action takes the ink provided by the single ink channel and spreads it out to both tines as they spread, kind of like a soap bubble blow stick, as opposed to a two ink channel where each channel's ink supply needs for capillary action of the nib to take each line of ink from each channel and bring them together in order to create a bridge of ink to the nib tines as they separate. It's not really a problem for non-flex nibs, but for flex nibs, the fact that the amount of ink in each channel of a double channel feed is not sufficient, plus the size of a number six OmniFlex nib and the surface area of the nib is too large for the narrow ink channels to supply enough ink and enough ink fast enough for it to create that bridge of ink to cover the distance between the tines as they separate. Oftentimes we see a lot of ink starvation as the ink fails to bridge across the gap of the tines as the nib flexes and the tines separate. Last reason, the ink channel on the Bach feed extends further into the ink supply, be it a converter or a cartridge. On the standard chibi plastic feed with the double ink channel, the ink channel ends right where the housing of the ink channel ends. This is where the converter or cartridge grips the nib unit. In the Bach feed, we have an ink channel that extends further into the cartridge or converter, causing ink to draw into the feed faster at a greater rate. Going back to the Monza, other than the pen that it uses as a vehicle for the nib, I love it. I use it not just for flex, but for everyday writing. I also tested a separate number five OmniFlex nib unit that I bought and installed onto a Jinhao 992 to ensure I didn't just get lucky with my Monza. The results were identical with that of the Monza Jolly Green Flex. It showed up to play and it wrote like a freaking savage. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. 
Let's Talk Coin. This pen has an MSRP of $16. With online retailers, you can score this pen for $16. That is, as far as I'm aware, the least expensive option for a steel flex nib on the market. Before that, it was the Noodler's Nib Creeper at an average price point of $17. For the price of $16 and the accompanying warranty Yafa offers, I feel the Monza is the best option for inexpensive steel flex. With its ease of flex, line variation, and daily usability without the caveats of having to tweak the pen or having to deal with the pen smelling like a three-week-old dead body pulled from sewage plant runoff in the middle of the summer. However, this pen is still just a Jinhao 992. The only differences are the center band branding, the feed transparency, the packaging, and the nib. Now that does seem like a lot, but does the difference justify the cost being that a Jinhao is attainable for two bucks? I don't think so. The only time that I would say it's worth it is if you get the OmniFlex option as your nib. If you get the standard non-flex nib, then you are really paying for nothing more than the packaging and the name brand. That's all for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. Here's where things get sticky. Like I said, this pen is a Jinhao 992 rebranded. Thus, the pen comes with all the caveats of a Jinhao 992, meaning the pen body is as brittle as a punching bag made of potato chips. I have seen numerous accounts of a Monza breaking apart at the grip or the cap just after normal usage. I've also personally experienced stress fractures occurring in the threads of the body where it meets the grip threads. This was due to the O-ring on the threaded grip section putting pressure on the body threads as it screws onto the grip. There are ways to avoid stress fractures on the body thread. I just took the O-ring off the grip threads. So with regard to the ugly, I find that the overall material of the pen is the lowest possible quality on par with that of a cheap ballpoint pen. And this holds the pen back. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon, decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Monteverda Monza Jolly Green Fountain Pen? I spent a lot of time with this pen and I dwelled over this review more than I usually do, but I came to a conclusion. This pen is worth the cost for its flex nib and the way it writes, that is all. All the other bells and whistles, such as the box, the transparent feed, the branding, does not change the fact that it is a Jinhao 992 rebranded. If not for the number five OmniFlex nib, this pen would not be anywhere on my radar. But because of its nib and how well it writes, this is my favorite steel flex nib to date. So if you're into flex, pull the trigger on this pen. Could you buy a Jinhao 992 and the nib unit separately and then assemble them? Sure. But the nib alone is about $10 to $12, plus the $2 for the Jinhao. That puts you at about $14 to $15, and at that point, I'd just go with the Monza. But if you're not into flex, I cannot justify why you should spend the additional $14 more for a $2 pen at heart, unless the bells and whistles that accompanies it are selling points for you. That was my review on the Monteverde Monza. I hope you found it helpful. I want to thank my sponsors, Kenro Industries, as well as my good friends at Goldspot Pens for making videos like these possible. Most of all, I want to thank you guys for the love and support. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.